welcome back to another devlog. To start off, I'd like to say sorry for the lack of activity these past few weeks. I slowly began to realise I was putting more effort into my video schedule than working on the game itself, which is why I originally made this channel in the first place, to document my game development. I've also been working really hard on getting a playable demo of the game out, so expect that to be out soon. I'll have more information on the demo towards the end of the video, so please watch until the end. I'd also like to thank everyone that joined the Discord recently. I'm very bad at keeping active there, but I'm working on becoming more active. We're slowly growing a small community, so that's great. Once I hit 500 subscribers here on YouTube, I'll be doing a special video including Discord members, so if you'd like to take part in that, feel free to join the Discord. Links are in the description and the comments. Anyway, into the devlog. These past few weeks I've been working on finalising the last major mechanic required for the first demo build, saving and loading game data. In previous projects, I've made basic saving and loading systems for variables such as ints, floats, strings and pools. But I've never saved information such as game object data, like rotations or positions, so this was completely new to me. For simplicity, I'll refer to saving between scenes as locally saving, and saving between the game opening and closing as globally saving. I had a couple theories on how to save all of this data smoothly. Originally I had thought of each object to relay its information through one long int, and splitting that int into smaller ints of data. For example, this was a demo int for the male, baby, orange clownfish, including its position and rotation. I'll put some diagram on the screen to hopefully make it a bit more clear. So this long variable is made up of multiple smaller pieces of data, the tank ID, the object type, in this case fish, the object ID, which is the ID of the orange clownfish, the size, gender, and position and rotation. Obviously already there's some minor issues with this idea. The positions and rotations would need to be longer to account for decimals, and also it's missing the fish's name. It would be possible to fix this issue, but I was making this a lot more confusing and complex than it needed to be. I instead decided to leave this idea behind and make a list with multiple variables, which was something I've never used before. I made a new class called data storage and filled it with all the possible information an object would need. In this case, fish will have the most information out of the other object types that within the game, so I built the list around them. The list stores an ID, which is incremented with each object spawned within the game, a tank ID, to ensure that the correct objects are spawned within each tank, an object type, which just lets the spawner know what it is spawning, whether it's a fish, critter, plant, or decoration, the name assigned to that object if there is one, for example you could rename a snail to Gary or a fish to Nemo, that object's position and rotation, its scaling and size, gender, and whether or not the object is active within that scene. Currently if the fish dies or is sold, it becomes inactive, meaning its information is still stored somewhere, it's just not being used. As well as all that, it saves its age, hunger and breeding settings. Whether or not the fish is hungry, or sick, or whether it can currently breed or if it's on a cooldown for either hunger or breeding. To save data locally, a temporary list is created on game load and updated throughout, either on a timer or when an action takes place. For example, a fish eating or giving birth would update the information. For the other type of objects, saving with less data input required, such as plants, critters, or decorations. A second temporary list is created, using the same class layout, but only the suitable information is loaded and saved within it. For example, a piece of decoration would not have a gender or hunger variables. There are also separate smaller lists created for both usables and algae, as these are both temporary items within the game. When these lists contain zero active members, they are reset and cleared as do not store unnecessary data. As for globally saving, all these lists, when loaded, are loaded from a save file which then updates through the game's runtime on their temporary counterparts. When the game saves, it overwrites the save file with the temporary list data, which saves where the objects are, what their variables currently are, and so on, saving each tank's data into one single file. As for basic variables, such as currency, time, research points, and so on, they're all pretty self-explanatory. When the save timer is triggered, or when the game is closed, these variables are updated within the save file's data, updating both the local and global counterparts. Challenge progression is also saved using a similar list type system to the fish or the objects, but simplified. Each challenge has an ID, a variable called a progressive variable, which is basically the tracker of that specific challenge, and the maximum number of tiers. As an example of a progressive variable, the challenge by fish has a progressive variable that is tracked under the save variable called number of fish bought, which is updated and saved whenever a fish is purchased in the non-creative mode tank. Shop unlockables work pretty much the same as challenges, but with less information. They just save their ID, and whether they are locked or unlocked. 
A locked shop item will display how many research points are needed to unlock that item. Once those points are spent, the item is now unlocked, which updates the saved data, allowing the player to buy that item for any appropriate tank, including creative mode tanks. Aside from the saving and loading system, I've also been bug testing a lot and improving some of the smaller features. An issue I had noticed was that my currency changer UI was only being called under certain circumstances and wasn't updating or displaying at all under other situations. This was a quick fix. I made the method get called whenever the currency or research points were changed. Now if you buy multiple items of any sort within a small duration of each other, the currency change UI will be shown, and the same with selling items. If you however buy and then sell, it will switch to show the income of the sale instead of updating the purchase variable as this may confuse players, and vice versa. There are still some bugs within the game. They're mostly minor, and there's a lot of room for improvement on the game overall, but I think I'm finally nearing the first demo build. I'm not going to set an exact date for the demo's build quite yet, as motivation comes and goes for the project, but when it is time, my patrons will get early access by a week, followed by my Discord members or anyone else following my socials. During the time of my demo release, I will gather all the feedback information and bug reports into one singular document and work on my videos in the meantime, or other smaller games for a few weeks. Then once I've gathered enough data, I will come back to the project with all of my notes and prepare the next big update. Thanks so much for watching the video this far through, I really do appreciate it, and please bear in mind the game is still no way near finished at this point. In fact, it barely has any content compared to what I do have planned. This will just be the first unfinished tank of many. Again, if you would like to be in the planned 500 sub special video, please join my Discord. I will reveal what it is closer to the time. Thank you so much to all my patrons over on Patreon for supporting me in the channel. So a huge thank you to Tom, Fist Me Daddy, and Sab Kitty for supporting me over on Patreon. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe. Feel free to leave any feedback or suggestions in the comments. I'd love to hear them. The links to all my socials and my Discord join link are in the description, so feel free to come and hang out and share your projects, as well as devlogs in there. Thank you so much for watching.